Welcome to part 8 of the Advanced Revit course. In this lesson, you're going to be learning all about keynotes and how to use them to specify elements within a Revit project. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Another way of tagging in Revit is by using keynotes. I'll often use a mix of both category tags and keynotes. So a keynote parameter is available to all model elements. And that includes detail components, which we will look at in a future tutorial in this course. It also includes materials. So any of these elements can be tagged using a keynote family tag. The keynote value is derived from a separate or linked Excel spreadsheet or text file that has data in it. Category tags are really good for in-model information like the door numbers and window numbers, room numbers, things like that. But keynotes I like to use for specifying different things. So there are two values you can have associated to a keynote. You get the keynote um, number or the keynote tag, I guess you can say, and then you can assign a keynote comment. This is sort of what I'll use for specifying specific things in the project. I find keynotes really useful because it's eliminating again that use of dummy text or just chucking normal text on a uh, Revit sheet or a Revit view. Instead you're starting to use a separate spreadsheet and then assigning each element a keynote value which you can then refer to in a special keynote schedule inside of Revit. This may all sound really complicated at the moment. Once we get into it, you'll find that it's really simple. And once it's set up, it's in a really, a really effective way of noting and specifying inside of Revit. So what might you use Keynotes for? There's a whole lot of different things. In this course, we're going to showcase it being used to display different wall types and materials, such as finishes, lining types, and things like that. You'll find Keynotes under the Annotate tab under Keynote, and you can see there are Element Keynotes, there are Material Keynotes, and then there are User Keynotes. And we'll touch on them a bit in a second. But first, let's actually set up a text-based document and link it to this model. So if we go to the Keynote settings, you'll see that there is no file location for our Keynote. And in fact, you might even see that it will generate one for you. What you'll see is that you'll need to link a text file or, a, or an Excel spreadsheet file to this model. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and create one inside of our advanced folder here for the advanced course. I'm just going to go to File, New, Text Document. And that's all we need to do, just a notepad text document to create a keynoting system. So I'm going to call this Advanced Course Keynotes. And I'm just going to take that off the screen. But what we want to do is now link to that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Browse. Here you can see we've got Advanced Course Keynotes. If we select that and open it, that keynote table has reloaded successfully. Now we can go ahead and start editing and using this keynoting. If I open up that text file, what you'll see is nothing because there's nothing there. But this is where we can start to list our different types of keynotes. So there's going to be two columns. You're going to have a keynote column, which is going to have your tag, I guess you could say. And then you have another column with the description of that tag or that legend key. To do this, let's go ahead and create wall type 01. That is going to be the first wall type that to tag in this Revit model. And you might think, how is this even talking to Revit? But trust me, this will work. If we hit tab, we can now type a description of what wall type 01 is. So let's say it's a 270 millimeter double brick wall with a 50 millimeter cavity. Let's go ahead and write that in. So we've hit tab. And now we're moving over to the side here and we're going to type 200 mil 270 millimeter double brick wall with 50 millimeter cavity. Now let's go ahead and click enter to create a new row. You can sort of imagine this is in an Excel spreadsheet. You've got one column here and then this is the second column and then you've got new rows for each line. And we'll call this wall type 02. We'll hit tab and we might call this one well, what other types of walls do we have? We haven't really specified them in this model. Let's say that this wall here is a 110 millimeter stud wall. We'll just call it that. And we can call it lined with plasterboard. So now we've got 
two different wall types that are going to be in our Revit model. They aren't in there yet. What we need to do is first save this Keynote uh, file, this text file, and then we're going to go back to our keynoting settings in Revit, and we're going to reload this file. And it's going to reload that Keynote text. If we go ahead and click OK, we've now got this loaded into our model. To use that information that we've just put into that Keynote file, we can go down to the Keynoting settings where it's got this drop down and now use the element Keynote. I can now go ahead and select any of these walls. I might select this 270 millimeter brick wall and you can see it's already loaded in a Keynote tag for us. If you haven't got one of these loaded in already, then you can go ahead and find one in your Revit library. There are a few in there. Otherwise, I'll have one in the course files as well available for you to download. I'm going to go ahead and click on this wall. And now you can see we can assign a Keynote value for it. So you can see we've got both of those options we just wrote in this Keynote file. If we open up our Keynote file, these two talk to each other. So inside of Revit, we've got wall type 01, which is the double brick wall with a 50 mil cavity. And in the uh, the text file, we've also got wall type 01, the 270 millimeter brick wall mill cavity. Let's select that. And that's going to assign a key value of WT01 to this brick wall. Let's click OK. Here you can now see that it's got a wall type tag, which has been assigned to this wall. It can be moved wherever you want. We can also add a leader to it coming off of that wall. So that's wall type one, which is going to be placed here. Now what's really cool about this is that it's now added this key value, this wall type 01, to the actual wall type or the wall family inside of Revit. So if we edit the type of this wall and we scroll down to Keynote under Identity Data, this is similar to the mark of it as we saw with the windows and doors. The Keynote is now wall type 01. But instead of being instance based like the marks of the windows and doors were where we can change them all individually this keynote value has been assigned to the entire double brick 270 system family wall so what that means is that now we cancel out of that and we go back to the annotate tab and we create another element keynote if we find this wall again which is this is the exact same family here that can be tagged again and it's going to keep that wall type data so it's going to be consistent across the entire project. Whereas if we were just to create a text note that said wall type 01 and we use an arrow to point it onto this wall, if that ever changes, we would have to change it for each and every single one of these notes that we've got somewhere else, which is a terrible workflow and a terrible way to do things. So I'm going to delete that. But now you can see we've got these two wall types. What does that mean and how do we access that? A little hack here, if you come up to the top, bar you can close inactive views to make sure that any other views that you don't have open inside of this project are going to be closed that's just to clean it up a bit if i open the ground floor plan sheet you can see that these wall types are still here but what we can do now is add a keynote schedule or a keynote legend to this view so what i'm going to do for that is come down to legends in the project browser I'm going to right click that and go new keynote legend. This is going to create a legend based off of this notepad information. So you can see that it's got key value and keynote text as the available fields. That's all you have for a keynote. That's the only information that's embedded inside this tag, I guess you could say. You can change a few of these other settings, but we're going to leave that for now and just create a schedule. Here you can see wall type 01 is the only one in this um, legend because that's the only tag we've referenced so far. So any other tags that you have inside this document that aren't referenced are not gonna be shown inside the schedule. So this is actually a really good way of having, say, your all of your office's standard ways of doing things, all of your standard wall types, all of your standard materials, having it inside one document, and then just assigning them inside your Revit model every time you wanna use it for a new project and then it doesn't show all of the unnecessary information in your specification once you publish your schedule. So now that we've got this keynote legend and we go back to our ground, ground floor sheet, all we have to do is drag that legend, that keynote legend onto the sheet. And you'll see that we've now got our keynote legend. I'm just gonna bring this out to make it a bit more readable. And in fact, we've got this area over here for our legends and I'm just going to bring this inside of that little area. 
Now you can see that because wall type 01 has been assigned on this wall, it's going to show up in this schedule on the side or this legend. And it's going to show that wall type 01, the key value, which is going to be shown here, is you know this type of wall type, which is 270 millimeter double brick wall. And that's going to show you under the keynote text and the specification. So then rather than showing you know, that dummy text of wall type 01 with it not referencing anything and then creating a schedule on the side here which says wall type 01 is a 270 millimeter double brick wall. Well, what happens then if you somehow change that down the line and it ends up becoming a, you realize it's a 250 millimeter double brick wall. Then you have to go throughout your entire document and change each and every one of those tags. Instead now, if wall type 01 in fact is a 250 millimeter double brick wall instead of a 270 millimeter one. All we have to do is come into this notepad document, make the change in this one spot, so we can call that 250 millimeters, go to file, save, go back to our Revit keynoting settings, and then reload this document, and you'll see that it is going to update inside of this model. So that information is now embedded onto that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and make that stay as 270 because that's what it is. And then every time that happens, we have to reload the Keynote uh, file. And so what happens now if we want to tag another wall? If we go to Keynote, Element Keynote, and we say tag this wall, which is a timber stud with plasterboard lined in and out. So this is going to be a 90 millimeter stud wall with a 10 millimeter thick plasterboard on each side. If we tag this wall, and it's going to have a leader on it, again, it's going to ask us which key value do we want to assign to this wall? And this is going to be wall type 02, our 110 millimeter stud wall lined with plaster. We're going to click OK, and you're going to see that that automatically generates this keynote value of WT2. Now, our schedule and our legend on the side, what you're going to see is that that's automatically put that into that legend. Again, if that ever changes, we just have to change it in this text file. It's a very simple way of working. So then let's look at the level one floor plan. Here, you're gonna see that there is no keynote schedule because we've only put it on that one sheet. Now, can we copy this schedule across the both sheets? Let's have a look. If we copy it with Control C and then try to align it to the current view, you're gonna see that we can, in fact, place it on this sheet. But what it's doing now is it's referencing these two wall types, which aren't, in fact, referenced or tagged on this view. So we don't wanna show unnecessary information that isn't actually referenced on this view. How do we get about changing? If we double click on this schedule or this legend, it's actually a legend, but it, it's more like a schedule. We can go under the filter tab on the properties panel here. And what we can actually do is go filter by sheet. If we click okay, and we look at the ground floor plan, it's gonna look exactly the same as it did because it's referencing those two wall types on this view. But if we go to the level one floor plan, you're gonna see that they aren't referenced anymore because it's filtering it by every sheet. If it's not tagged on this view, it's not gonna show up on that legend, which is really cool. So now let's say that we want this schedule again to go on the level two floor plan, the one that we haven't put it on yet. If I go ahead and go to the ground floor plan and try to copy this and go to that level two floor plan and paste it like we did before, you're gonna see that again, it's gonna place it in the exact same spot and it's not gonna reference those things that aren't tagged in this view. Back on our level one floor plan, what we can do is tag all of these walls again. And you're gonna see wall type 02 has already been tagged. It's already got that keynote value because that's that timber stud wall, that 110 millimeter timber stud wall. So all we have to do is just tag that and it's going to automatically generate that tag in the legend as well. So once you've assigned each and every single one of your wall types, a value, a keynote value inside of this document and then assigned it once to it in your project, then all you have to do is tag it and it's going to show up in all of your Keynote legends and on all of your views that you've tagged it. So this doesn't just work for wall types, this can work for really anything you want to note inside of Revit, which is really cool. So you can you know, do roof types, you can do internal lining types, paint types or finishes. Um, you can also do it so you can showcase different structure with different codes and you can specify what they are. There's a whole big list and world of things you can do with keynotes and tags. So another cool thing you can do 
is now take this to your elevations. Let's say we go to the north south elevations just randomly and let's say we select this uh, north elevation. Let's have a look. We've got that double brick wall here. Let's just make sure this is wall type 01, which it is. So you can see it's still got that model information. What we can do is go to the annotate tab and create another keynote tag for this. We can tag this wall in an elevation as well. Now you won't necessarily show it like this, how I am, um, but let's just put that tag off to the side. You can see it's referencing that image and it's got wall type 01. We can also go ahead and paste in that keynote schedule and it's got that information there, which is really cool. But let's say that we wanted to display this keynote text in this box instead of the key value. Is that something we can do? Yes, it is. If we click on this keynote tag, you can see that we've got keynote number box. What happens if we go to the keynote number? That's going to get rid of the box. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But then what if we go to the keynote text? Now we're taking that keynote text, that information that we put in the notepad file, and we're bringing it into the model and we can use that as a tag. And if we change this information anywhere, it's also going to change it in this tag in all of the schedules. So all we have to do is just change it here and it's going to change it in all of those different ways. So in another one of my projects that I've done, you can see how I've done that here. All I've done is tagged this roof and this is roof type 01 or something like that. And if we look at the roof plan, you can see how this is all organized pretty nicely. If we go to the roof plan, you'll see that this is tagged as roof type 01 and roof type 02. Now let's look at that detail. You'll see that roof type 01, which is this here, we'll look at it in the edit type, roof type 01, it's been tagged with this specification. So that was just a one click tag and I can reference that on all of my other views as well. And then here, this wall type, this was wall type 0, I'm guessing 1, wall type 01, that's referenced here with its actual specification of what it is, which is really important. And so that way I don't even need a schedule or the keynote schedule for it because that information is just embedded in the model. Again, if I go to a different project of mine, this is a um, another extension job, you'll see that I've got window tags for all the windows, I've got door tags for all of the doors, and then I've got these lining tags. So these are just keynotes again with the key value of LN01, and then it's got text to show what that actually is. If I go to my actual ground floor plan sheet, you'll see all of those are referenced here. So this information is just in a keynote file, in a, uh, a, a text file, and then it's automatically generated here when it's tagged in the model. Another place where I've used these keynote tags is for the roof framing plan. This is just a notional um, plan for the builder to kind of reference. It's not really a in-depth um, engineering you know, drawing, but it's showing what each and every single one of these elements are. Now these aren't just dummy text things. These are keynotes again, and they're just a different type of keynote because this one has no box. Whereas if we make this the keynote text, you'll see that it's actually a 190 by 45 MGP 10 beam. If I undo that, you'll see it's actually B6. And all of that information is being referenced in the legend because when you tag these elements and you'll see that these are actually detail items. This is a detail component. It's not even a modeled element, but we've tagged this detail item and it's showing that information in the legend. So it's a really strong and powerful way to annotate. So I think this naturally leads into looking into some of these other things like legends and schedules. They may seem really boring, but you can do some really cool and exciting things with them, trust me. In the next lesson, you'll learn all about using legends within Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.